this is a guy who doesn't fish because he doesn't want to hurt a worm putting it on a hook. This is the man Diane Bruce called her husband for 24 years. The only way I thought he would ever use a gun is in defending himself or defending me. So I don't know how to make sense out of any of it. And I know the public, the victims, probably everybody would like for somebody to be able to give an explanation. People are going to have a hard time believing that you had absolutely no clue. It's impossible for me to wrap my mind around how this could be the same person. Diane and Thomas Bruce met at a home Bible study in California in the early 1990s. I just thought he was a sweet, tender-hearted guy. That's what drew me to him. The couple married in 1994. They moved to Jackson, Missouri in 2001, and he started a church here near the town square. Overall, how would you say the marriage was? He had a great sense of humor, but he also could just frustrate the life out of me. In the months leading up to the shooting, he had been um, suffering more with um, anxiety and depression. Diane was working as many shifts as she could while her husband wasn't working. On November 18th, she was running late. He texted me, there's been a shooting. When I got home, he had dinner ready and it was like nothing had happened at all. I mean, he did not seem upset, nervous, anything. They watched TV after dinner. The Catholic supply store shooting led the evening news. Breaking news tonight, a shooting inside a Catholic supply store. What we're learning from the scene and the search for the suspect. And I said there, there has to be more to this. Why, why would somebody just walk in, shoot somebody in the head and walk out? They didn't even know. And he said, who knows in today's world? Three days later, Diane walked out her front door and into a whole new chapter of her life. It was about 5 o'clock in the morning, and she was heading to work. And he was awake, laying in bed, watching the news. Um, I kissed him goodbye, said goodbye to the dogs. And as I pulled the door closed, and as I turned to go down the stairs, two sets of headlights came on at the dead end of the street. They came speeding down the hill, two black vehicles, and suddenly swerved into the front yard. And the doors flung open and all these men in black came rushing towards me. I thought I was being kidnapped. They said, your husband has been identified in a very serious crime. And um, I leaned against my car for support and said, you, you must have the wrong person. <clears throat> and they said the evidence is overwhelming. She watched police tow away the couple's cars and let them search her house. Figured they're going to find out they have the wrong person. She sat inside an interrogation room that day for eight hours. And I remember just silently crying out to God and saying, I really need to hear from you now. And what came to mind immediately was when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. That verse was repeated back to her twice more by close friends looking to comfort her. I had cried out to God and he had so tenderly let me know that he was there and he heard me. Days later, a moment of reckoning. Diane found a receipt for two guns totaling $1,000. He told her he had won them in a drawing. I thought, who is this person? She filed for divorce. Three years later, her ex-husband pleaded guilty to the murder and sexual assaults at the Catholic supply store. She sat in the back of the courtroom as the surviving victims read impact statements during his sentencing. They were just amazing, the, the, um, the courage and the strength they had to tell their story and to speak directly to him. Jamie Schmidt's family, the woman he killed, shared their pain in court too. My heart hurts so much for them. and and all that they've been through. Bruce was sentenced to life in prison without parole. A few days after the hearing, Diane got a letter from him. He said that um, he, did, he didn't remember the incident itself. She doesn't believe him. Police found the coat he wore during the attack in their dumpster. He remembered to put that coat in the trash at some point. There's been no communication from her ex-husband since then. Like so many people, she still wants answers. She says her struggle to make sense of it all is like trying to untangle a necklace. And it seems like when you try to untangle it, it gets more tangled. So she turned it over to God. I felt like he said, just lay it down. It's not yours to untangle. She also feels like God has given her a new purpose. Where do you go from here? No matter how small your problems are, no matter how big they are, 
he cares about every one of them. And um, I just want to encourage other people that he was, he's been there for me and he'll be there for them too if they just trust him. For the I-Team, Christine Byers, five on your side.